Greetings and blessings. Um, I'm glad to be here and I'm excited to be here. And I'm so joyful to have you on board on this such a, uh, an amazing uh, and very unique uh, broadcast. Emmanuel Makandiwa is my name and I'm here to present some few lessons, if not quite a lot of lessons that we have been able to extract by the grace of God from events that have been taking a center stage over the past few weeks. As you have seen, I think we tried our best to let you know briefly on the content of this uh, discussion that we are going to have. And I'm going to focus mainly on three different areas in as much as they are to a certain extent connected to each other. So the topic that we are going to be dealing with today, as you have seen, it is lessons from TB Joshua and the BBC documentary that I believe most of you have watched. And I have also personally watched it seriously because it is a matter of concern. I also needed to hear and see what is happening. So there is a lot that we are going to be discussing here. So I really ask and plead and beg for your attention since this is not a mere uh, comment that I'm going to give, but these are critical lessons that needs to be extracted from what has transpired. So we are going to be uh, spending some time, especially if you know yourself to be someone who can not keep his attention for too long. You listen for a while, take a break, and then you come and you continue. So I'm going to be very, very, very slow in my presentations, because every single word that is going to be uttered here, at some point in your lifetime, you are going to find it needful. You're going to need it. You might not be in need of what I'm saying today, to you, but your tomorrow will require this kind of knowledge that you're going to get today. Definitely, in terms of lessons to be learned, there are quite a lot of lessons. So the three different areas or segments that I'm going to address, I'm going to deal with the positives. I'll also try to deal with the negatives. And as you know, definitely there is nothing that I, that I can do to stop people from then removing parts that they don't prefer and then maybe they highlight areas that are negative. Well, that's up to you. That is the beauty of this world. There's nothing that I can do, but I'll try by all means to make sure that it is packaged, presented and delivered well. And this presentation, you're going to find it very much balanced, especially if you are a person who has pleasure in wisdom, in knowledge and in understanding. So, the three areas I'm going to cover, I'm going to address three different constituencies, which is mainly uh, the, the clergy, which is the, the men of God, the 
prophets, the apostles, bishops, teachers, evangelists. That's a constituency on its own that I'm going to try and address. And I'm going to also try and address the media houses, which is the, the social media. And uh, I'm also going to address the women, women or church members, or the victims. So, depending on where you stand, you have to listen to what I'm about to say from your constituency. Some of the things that I'm going to say, unfortunately, I had to put it in one package. And after you've opened it, you realize there are three gifts that are in that one package so that I don't keep on coming back to add more information to what I would have already said. It's necessary that I address this matter. It was not my decision. I have to make this part clear from the onset. I'm not responding because I've received several messages and emails from people asking me to comment on what they've watched. No, because I'm, I'm never known for that, so they wouldn't ask me to do so. I've never sat down to talk about matters of that nature where I get to mention people's names. So, since the people that really follow what I do, they've known me to be a person who doesn't get myself involved. But there's a reason why I needed to come out this time around. It was not my intention. It was not according to my plan. It's completely against my nature and my preferences. I'm not in any way comfortable discussing matters to do with other men of God in public. But this came as a result of lessons, these lessons that you're going to get. When I got them myself from the Lord, I thought it's something that God himself wanted me personally to learn until he told me that I'm teaching you these things so that you teach what you have learned, go ahead and teach, disseminate, distribute this understanding that I've given you from what is happening. So, we are going to learn quite a lot. So, I'm going to talk about TB Joshua. And a lot is going to be said here. And I will address the, like I've said, the positive and the negatives. Some might wonder why I am addressing him as T.B. Joshua and not as Prophet T.B. Joshua. It is not because he's not a prophet. I'm not addressing him as prophet for the same reasons why I introduced myself as Emmanuel Makandil. Because that's how God addresses us when he talks to us. He doesn't say prophet, prophesy. He says son of man, prophesy. So, where do I stand? Probably these different sectors are going to be addressed, not sequentially. So as you sit and you listen, you will hear that your area is being addressed over here. And after some few minutes, even in as much as I might have gotten into another constituents, I'll still keep on coming back to your constituents. 
So gather as much as you can, as long as you know where you stand. So I'll be doing back and forth, back and forth, but making sure I cover every constituency, as I've said. Um, there are so many good things that I can talk about with regards to T.B. Joshua. You might want to know, I've never met him. I've never been close to him. Yet I have spoken to him over the phone. At early stages of our ministry, we had some discussions on the phone. And he had things that he wanted to share with me. I also had things that I also needed to say. But we spoke, I think, uh, for about not more than six times over the phone. And part of the conversation was that he needed me to visit him to come to Scorn to come to Nigeria. And um, I said, I, 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 can, I cannot promise you that I'm, I'm coming. I will have to think about it. At the same time, we have things that I felt we needed to discuss, but not over the phone. And I did not then visit him. I didn't go to Nigeria for reasons that I can not share with you over here. Because over time, after days, having spoken, even having told him that I'm going to think about it, I had my own personal experiences. I had things that I was not comfortable with, thoughts that came through my mind of how things were going to turn out. Uh, anyway, I don't want to really uh, get into that part, but I didn't go. I didn't go. Now remember the wise uh, statements by one of the presidents of the United States of America, J.F. Kennedy. He once said that Success has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. So, I didn't go. For your own information, this, this corn people can can prove. Because T.B. Joshua, I believe in as much as people say he was not educated, he was intelligent, he was smart in his own way. And he wouldn't make a call and it's not being recorded. You wouldn't pay him a visit and cameras are not rolling. So they have my voice. I've spoken to him not more than six times. And in some of those conversations, of course, I address him as prophet. And I appreciated him for the many good things that he is doing, some that I'm going to mention here. So I'm going to start from there. Lessons that we can glean from the TB Joshua and BBC documentary. 
my brothers and sisters, make sure that you have really um, relaxed. Take your time, sit and learn. Collect as much as you can, depending with your capacity to carry. These are really matters of concern and what we see happening now requires that we speak. Like I've said before, in as much as this is not the way that I would rather have it, but it's an instruction, I have to do it. So I feel there is need for me to let you know. And these are things that can be confirmed that we once had the conversation. Because people might want to also understand that part you are speaking as who. Do you know the man? I've never met him physically, like I said. But we've spoken. Um, there is a lot that can happen. You don't want a situation, especially men of God. I've watched several men of God. They meet in public and they start helping each other in public. I've seen men of God during conferences laying hands on each other. And um, you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you are not in control of what is happening. Probably uh, things can be said which cannot be verified, which might even not be true. And by the time that you come back home, you have to understand your turf, your environment, how your people would consider some of those issues seriously. And the process that you would need to go through to recover from whatever would have been said. And you're no longer in a position. You must understand, you must discern, you must question why am I being invited? Because it's happening at a time when we are also rising and probably is also rising. I know what happens sometimes when men of God meet. It's possible you can visit a man, you are talking, but by the time you get to his place, it's like you have never met before. Because everyone is trying to gain mileage. So, I'm, I'm, I just needed to, to say that part, lest people keep on questioning, why then didn't you go? I've given you a clue already. Um, I've watched several of his videos. If you look at the way that the man conducted himself, there are good things that we can learn. I'll get to the part where I, I talk about people that have come out to make confessions. And um, I'll try not just to address the people involved in the documentary, but I'll try and address the community, that constituency. the members, the vulnerable. That part is going to be so crucial for some of you, it's important. I, I believe in building up cases. I know you might want me to jump straight into matters I'm already in, as long as you follow, just follow where we are going. Um, my daughter once asked me, why is it in chapter two of the book of Samuel? I see Eli 
inviting his sons who were promiscuous, sleeping with women in the church, in the temple. And he's asking them, my sons, what is it? What is this thing that I hear from the people? Why are you doing this to God's people? And he tried by all means as a father to give his sons counsel. And he said, if a man has a matter against another man, another man will come and mediate and intervene and even intercede. But if a man has a matter against God, who shall stand in between? This was Eli advising his children to desist from the sin that they were committing in the temple of God. That's in chapter 2. And then she said to me, but in chapter 3, God comes to Samuel and he tells him, this is the thing that is so terrible that I'm going to bring upon the house of Eli because of the iniquity that his sons has committed because of the blasphemies. When we looked at that, the blasphemy was not in the sense of them having opened their mouth and insulted the Holy Spirit or insulted God. They had slept with women. And God did not just call it adultery, He calls it blasphemy. It was an attack on God. Yet having slept with His people. So her question was, why did God in chapter 3 then say to Samuel, Eli did not rebuke. Eli did nothing concerning the matter. So I'm going to bring horror over his family, a thing that when people hear, their ears are going to tingle. So her question was trying to reconcile the two. How come I saw him openly, clearly rebuking his sons and advising them not to sin against God in chapter 2. And in chapter 3, God is saying he did nothing to correct his sons. So we began to discuss, we began to learn from there. And as much as he might have rebuked, this is what we found out that in as much as he might have probably disciplined his sons, he did not discipline them to an extent that God would consider it a discipline. Did he not advise his sons not to blaspheme against God? He did. Did he stop them? Did he fire them from offering service in the temple? He did not. Eli would probably have hired other people to come and do the same duties, but he did not. So God, that's why even when Samuel brought the news to Eli, that this is what God said, that he's going to beat you up. Eli himself did not complain. He did not say, but how come I advised them to stop? And in chapter 2, even you, God, you helped my sons to not listen to me because you wanted to kill them. You see it in chapter 2. When the father rebuked his sons, God came and hardened the hearts of the sons to not listen to their father because he wanted to kill them. And God comes in chapter 3 and he's saying, you didn't do enough. <laughs> so, there is something greater, something bigger that Eli should have done. 
yet he did not. So there comes a time when we are supposed to speak. Some listen to this and they think they are hearing a new phenomenon. I'm giving you scriptures now where you have things happening in the Bible. Atrocities being committed in the Bible as back as then. So, are all these people coming out telling the truth? Are they lying? Well, let's, let's discuss. Let's talk about that. You need to have the wisdom of God in you activated. It has to be activated every time that you interface with information from different sources. You must first of all have the wisdom which is of God as a qualification. That is what qualifies you to be reading stories. It is the wisdom that qualifies you to be following up on matters, especially on social media, you need to make sure that you have an instrument designed to safeguard you, safeguard your heart. And that instrument is called wisdom. So, it's easy to investigate a lie in as much as it is difficult for some people. But let's look at um, things that you have heard most people say concerning T.B. Joshua. You have a man that they say was a ritualist. He's into witchcraft. He's into dark arts. He's a wizard. They've said all sorts of things about, about the men, including in this documentary that is recently come out. Of course, you also hear people saying that, why are they speaking now that the man is dead? But according to the documentary, if you follow it very well, you see that it, those people were interviewed before their intention was for this matter to come out before the man passes on. It's clear in the documentary and yet still people are saying, why? Are you doing this, realizing the man is no longer here? So, these are things that you look at and you question yourself, where is the truth in this? Now, if a man is into rituals, then when you want to destroy him, when you want to attack him, when you want to discredit him, you want to bring him down, there are things about the man that you should not deny. There are things about the man that you should not ignore. I had, this is not like prophetic, this is not in the spirit. No, I watched the documentary. I, when people ask me, what's your take on this, on other matters, I look into the matter first. 
on this one, I had to look into the matter, even though people were not bothering me, but I needed to understand what is happening here. Now think for a moment. You have a man who is working in your prayer mountain. He's not a little boy, he's a mature man. He's probably a father of I don't know how many children and he's one of your workers and he's your intercessor and he stays in the prayer mountain and he's there for 16 years. And in that place, you've got pictures of men of God that are being prayed against, whether whether there is blood being spilled on the pictures, whether they are using swords. And at some point he said, he comes to the prayer mountain and there is a fish pond over there. And then he, he, he removes his hair and his puberty hair. And we took one of the fish and he, he puts it in the mouth of the fish and allows the fish to go and then the fish started multiplying and, and all sorts of things. And you, you look at that. What is it that you would have done if you were TB Joshua? Having a worker who is taking care of your place, probably is your intercessor. And you are not of God. And you want him to believe that you are of God. Would you do this in his presence? What stops you from shaving your hair and you carry it to the place and you dismiss everyone and you conduct your ceremonies? This man is saying, I saw him, he took off his hair and he went under and again he took off his hair placed it in the mouth of a fish, in your presence, still wanting you to believe that he is of God. <laughs> and after that, you seem not to be sure. It's either he is of God, you hear him saying it's either he is of God or he is of the devil. You can be close to a man for 16 years and still you are not sure whether he's of God or he's of the devil. You must have verified that before granting people an opportunity to record you. We need people who are sure of what they are saying. Am I saying there are no pastors who are doing rituals? What I'm saying is, you can't put these arguments in the same statement. Once a man is into doing rituals and is shedding blood, you must identify the reason, things that then he goes on to do by reason of the rituals that he has, he has done. If he is into shedding blood, if he has slaughtered, if he has killed people, buried them somewhere, it must be for what reason? The reason must be probably power to do the miracles. An ability to prophesy. The ritual must then give the man the ability to prophesy and then not make use of his disciples to then collect information from people. Why would you kill a chicken? Why would you kill people? Why would you drink their blood? 
to then physically send people to collect information from visitors and they physically bring it to you so that you give it out as prophecy. Does that require human blood? <laughs> Am I saying he never conducted any ritual? I'm saying find one thing that you can accept. You cannot say all of the miracles were fake. All of the miracles were doctored. All the prophecies were physically and manually given to him by his disciples. And at the same time, he goes on to conduct some rituals. For what power? For what ability then? All I'm saying next time you think of destroying a man, find one side that you accept. Don't try to destroy all of him. <laughs> Sacrifice one side. Let go of one side. So if you're not listening to me carefully, you would think I'm saying, he never did that. He never shed blood. I'm simply saying, if you are saying he did, it was for what reason? Then you will realize that you have to let go of one area. You have to admit the power was there. The prophetic was there. And you then say it was as a result of the ritual that he was doing. Not to say there is a ritual and the man cannot prophesy. He is doing rituals and the man has no power to do the miracles. The rituals were for what? Maybe they were not for power. Maybe the rituals were not for the prophecies. Maybe the rituals were for a bigger church. Is his church the biggest in Nigeria? It's not. In terms of membership, he has few members as compared to other churches whose pastors are not being accused of conducting any ritual. Was it for, of course, people, many people would, those are not members, those were visitors. They would come from their churches, visit him, because they had problems. Those are not members. So the ritual was for what? Maybe the ritual was for long life. If he was drinking people's blood so that he would live long, then you must then come out and let us know that. Probably he never died, he's still alive. Just so that you, you defend, you justify the reason for the ritual. He did a ritual for what reason? Give us a reason that you say in this area, it was real, the power was real, the prophetic was real. You'd rather say, is not into rituals. Then you say, that's why I would give him information from the people that we get from the people. That's how you deal with a so-called prophet who has no access to a charm. If a charm is giving him information, why would you need a list of disciples eating your food, staying in the campus to collect information from the people that you have a charm that can give you information about the people. The two cannot go together, sacrifice one. I'm teaching you next time you seek to destroy, you seek to attack. Try 
to appeal to logic. Make sense in what you are saying. I don't want to have a man who has stayed with a man for 16 years to come out and say, it's either he is certain or he's, what were you doing in 16 years? You never had your phone on you in 16 years. You never spoke to your family from the prayer mountain. You never took a picture of what was happening. Am I saying he never did that? I'm just saying you are not smart enough. You are not the one to be used either by God or by the devil to bring down a man. We need people that are smart. Try to do a better job next time. Most people that I know that consider themselves to be prophets, they use physical means to get information about people from physical, natural sources. Yes, sending people to collect information, people come for counseling, you sit with a local pastor, a zonal pastor, a cell group pastor, and when they are coming for a quarterly conference where the general overseer is going to be ministering, those pastors, they bring information to their senior. And he knows how many members are coming from that cell. And they prophesy using information that they got from people and such a man of God doesn't require any ritual. You don't need to kill children. <laughs> so, this is what most people are doing. You don't need to cut the head of a man and you take out his heart and you eat it raw so that you can get information from Facebook about a person. The two doesn't go together. I'm educating you, I'm teaching you, in case next time you want to attack a man. Make sure that you are reasonable in your attempt. So there are things that you must accept. You cannot say T.B. Joshua had no power. You can't say there wasn't any power there. That's not true. You make us question then everything else that you're going to say. Do you even know what power is? He had it. As of the source, be sure. You don't expect us to be sure you were there for years. You have to be sure. So let's, let's keep on looking at what he's, he was doing. Quite a lot. Even Nigeria, even the government can attest to the contributions. He was a religious attraction. He contributed to the economy of his country. The more people you have coming into your country, that's a contribution to your economy. And are there things that you can say were wrong? I have things that I've learned. I've learned from a lot of men of God, a lot of things. I've just been showing you the positives. Things that you have to admit that T.B. Joshua was good at. The time that he knew how to make use of a camera publicity it was too early. The man knows something. The man knows something. 
if he did anything with his prophecies, if he edited prophecies, it depends on the way that you understand editing. Some of us, because God has also given us knowledge and understanding on how some of these things work. I would not discredit a man of God because he removed something from his prophecy. Personally, I would not. Because I know God himself removes a lot of things from what he tells his prophets. Editing starts with God. The fact that God doesn't tell you everything he knows, that's editing. He keeps certain information and he gives you a little bit. You look at what you have, you look at what he has spared, what he has kept. You know, editing has already begun. Number two, the fact that a prophet cannot tell you everything that he heard from God, he has already edited. There is no camera there, there is no any external technology, but it's not everything that he sees that he tells you. He goes on to edit. Editing is happening. The Bible was edited. Some books said to be removed. You were given 66 books. Did they not remove? They did. Did they not add? They added what was not there. Chapters and verses were not in the Bible. So throw it away. It depends with your knowledge, your understanding, your wisdom. Who cannot say he never prophesied? It's not everything he prophesied that came out true. It doesn't mean it's a sign that he's not a true prophet. A lot of things can happen. Events can change. People can pray against what you would have said. So follow this. He's a man that I, I don't I don't remember if there was ever a prophet who was good at giving out international prophecies. It started with him. If there were other prophets before, probably those were just general prophecies in passing, and then something comes to pass. We are talking of intentionally broadcasting a prophecy which is international in its nature. It was him who started it. Any other prophet who can claim that he was doing it before T.B. Joshua, people can claim the best they can do is to show us the videos. People talk. People talk. I know people, they, they begged at everything and you wonder. It's like they were, from, they were prophesying from the day they were born. But most of the people making such claims, these are very recent people. These are modern prophets and cameras were there. Technology was present. You can show us one international prophecy that you gave before T.B. Joshua started doing so. We, all of us, were not giving international prophecies. So I cannot sit here and tell you that there is nothing that I have not seen. I cannot lie that I have not learned anything. He had his own style. He had his own wisdom. He had his own approach. And if you want to learn, if you are smart enough, if you are wise, you don't only learn from the wise. If you are wise. So, you cannot say there's never been a single miracle 
in scorn. Even in that same church, in chapter 2 and chapter 3 of the book of 1 Samuel, where women were being slept with in church by the sons of Eli. And they were taking an offering from people before God could receive it. In that church, where such a thing was happening, you cannot say there was no miracle because it was in that same place that Hannah went to. Hannah went to that same church. <laughs> and Eli declared, And Hannah conceived, she was barren. And a miracle happened in that same church where ladies were being slept with. So even if he was sleeping with those girls, your assumption is then there shouldn't be any miracle happening. I'm giving you a church in the Bible where ladies were being slept with. And another lady came to the same church and she received a miracle. If you had to interview Hannah, she would tell you there is no sin in that church simply because of a miracle that she got from there. Yet the rest of the girls are crying. So you think if a man is committing sin, he stops prophesying. You hear some of them, they, they say, I, 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 was, I wonder how he would still prophesy after sleeping with me. It's like you once read a book that told you that once you sleep with a woman, you stop prophesying. I can educate you from the Bible. When Adam sinned, was it not the time that his eyes opened? It was the day he ate, he disobeyed. And what he took from that day, if you think that, okay, if you think that T.B. Joshua was prophesying by a charm, maybe there is a stick, maybe there is something that he eats and then he starts to prophesy. Isn't that the same case that we also received from Adam? Was it not a tree? Was it not a herb that he ate and his eyes opened and he began to see? And that was handed over to all of us. The sight he handed over to us. We have a father who disobeyed God and his eyes opened and he began to see. So why should you then wonder? How is it that a man can sleep with you and then he goes on to prophesy? How is it that a man in the garden sinned and his eyes opened? Lessons to be learned. Never think that a scandal, never think that a sin can ever stop a man of God from performing miracles. And from prophesying, it will still continue. I have to say that because that's what some of you use to measure. You look at the depth of the prophecy, the seriousness of the miracles, and you discredit any accusation that is raised against such a man. How can such a prophet do such a thing? Those two things don't go together. He can even be having his eyes more open because of the tree that he ate, which is forbidden. Don't measure the integrity of a man, the uprightness of a man, by the miracles that he performs. You are wrong. So, I hope you are following. So already, I'm showing you things that are good and also things that are bad so that your eyes can open 
Now, okay, let's talk about that documentary by the BBC. I would have wanted to see proper, undeniable proof. And it's not there. The documentary, there is nothing investigative about the documentary. It's an interview. It's an interview. You are inviting people to share their story. They did not give us any proof. There is no proof whatsoever. To me, crying is not enough. This is what I would have asked for as BBC, because my credibility is at stake. Investigation should have started after the interview. If someone comes to you and he tells you, this is what is happening in that facility, you have enough resources as a media house to pay scorn a visit. And having some of these things verified in video format and not in audio, probably that was going to be more believable. You must have ways of extracting information from the ground. You cannot hear that and you keep having certain rooms that, that cannot be opened, certain places and... No, people have, people have told you something is happening there. You hide your cameras, you visit the place. Yes, these victims, there was no way that they can actually bring out any proof, any evidence. This is so that when I get to the victims, I'll also teach them their own lessons when we get to the victims. You could have done a better job. A proper investigation, even if it's a family that you're investigating, the first thing that you do is to split the family and you interview each member of that family individually. So where are you going? Why are you coming into this country? What have you brought into this country? Is that your father? Is that your mother? How old is your mother? How old is your father? So is that your brother? Is that your sister? How old is she? You don't bring people together. And at the end of the documentary, you make them sit on lawn like it's a picnic. If you think I'm attacking you as BBC, I'm even encouraging you to do a better job next time. You don't want to have a person being interviewed and you hear certain words being repeated by two different people. In as much as the modus operandi can be the same, it cannot be word for word. One person comes and then she says, and he lays me on the ground with my back like a plank. And the other one comes and she says, he lays me down like a log. Those are this one and the same thing. Why should you allow one person to listen to another person's interview before you interview him or her? That wasn't a good job. If you really wanted to destroy the church, you can do a better job than that one. You can do a much better job than that one. 
Now, if you're working in for the men of God for years, maybe 20 years, maybe 15, maybe 10 years, and you are taking care of him and you are close to him 24 hours a day. And the only opportunity you had was a peep under the door once. And you were not able to hear what was being done except the volume of the television. You looked under the door and you saw a woman's feet. And then you go on to say, I saw that something was happening. You're not telling us what was happening. Something was happening on the couch over there. You're seeing, because once you are looking from under the door, your, your, your view, your sight is restricted. We can't rely on such a story. And if you were really working there for that amount of time, and that's the information that you bring out, why would you call yourself a wise man? Where is the wisdom in, 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 in that? Someone gives you access into his life for 24 hours and that's all that you bring out. Am I blaming you for what you're saying? I'm just saying you're not the right person to be telling us the story. You are not smart enough to convince people like us. If it was a woman's feet, what did you see on the feet? Cutex. Is the feet different from his wife's feet? What did you see on the feet that says this is a that's a woman? Come on. Come on. For the years that you have worked with the men, this is all that you can bring out. If I were BBC, I wouldn't have entertained that. If I had entertained, I would do a better job. Go further. Get to the place. Find ways. You can also book. You can also call. You also have beautiful ladies that you can also send. And they go there, they stay there as a guest. You have resources. You can't send 50 beautiful women and one of them is not picked. Why am I saying this? Already I'm dealing with the social media. Because if people are going to take this as proof, as evidence, then who is, who, is, who is not womanizing? Who is not sleeping with women? All of us, we are in trouble. If people have stooped this law to listen to such presentations and they believe it, that the thing happened, We can't be happy seeing that, watching that, because then who cannot do that? Who cannot offer such a service? Anyone with the phone that can record, you can interview anyone that you meet in the street. And he tells you, I was in that church and this is what they did to me. And people take that as evidence. There's no evidence there. There's no proof there. Am I discouraging these people from exposing men of God? No, I'm simply asking them to do a much better job. You can do a better job than this.
But once people are trained and now they get used to considering this as evidence, imagine the world that we're going to live in. We now have to be careful. No one is safe. If this is what you consider to be evidence, then no one is safe. So, still this is not to say everything that is being said is a lie. And I'm not saying T.B. Joshua did it. I'm saying, please next time, help us see. Show us. If there's no truth, don't put your name to something that cannot be verified. You lower, you reduce your credibility as a media house. We know their intentions. Even if there was anything good in that church, BBC was never going to broadcast that. How do I know? I know where they are coming from. There is a problem. If you do your study very well, you will notice that if T.B. Joshua was not black, yes, there would have been things being said, against him, but not to this extent. Whatever good a black man does, you have to fight for that story to be told. It's difficult. It's difficult. You did your research, if you did it, do your study on the transatlantic slave trade from the Central and Western Africa. You know, it was more than 12 million Africans that were transported to America as slaves more than two million, it's on record, died on the way. 12 million, imagine. And look at the number of the whites that came to buy slaves from Africa. Look at their number, very few, with few guns. People were being forced on the onset by the use of guns. And our fathers were taken into captivity. It happened early days as they were coming, before slaves could be distributed to the Portuguese and the French and it was all the British also picking their slaves from there. But when they started, our fathers were being taken by force, by the whites, into captivity. And as time went by, the responsibility was handed over to a fellow African. It was now the chiefs, the kings, the headsmen, who were capturing their own men and selling them to the whites. People know how to do that best. Getting you 
to fight your own, to attack your own. It is still there because it's black. We know how to fight each other. Next time they were coming, they were just paying some few monies to the chiefs. And the chiefs would hand over. It was his own people now arresting their brothers and, and sisters, sending them abroad. That's what they do. They use our own. If it's a trial on any medication, they will not bring it to Africa and they follow and they force it on us. They give it to a fellow African who makes it mandatory. And it's given to everyone. An African is designed that way. You can get him to destroy his fellow brother. We are good at that. We were capturing ourselves. And we were sending ourselves abroad as slaves. Black man. <laughs> Black man. Look at how we attack each other. Not, I'm not just talking because T.B. Joshua is black. No. Also even look at the black victims in that documentary. Who has been attacked the most? I'm showing you the truth. There can be 20 white people there claiming that I'm a victim. And you're five. If you're five black women, watch how your fellow black person will single you out, attack you and discredit you again because you're black. We have been trained, we are wired as blacks to fight against each other. I'm not saying the whites were not, are not criticized. I'm, I'm comparing the criticism, black against black. So let me touch another constituency. If you want a break, you can take a break and you come back and just continue watching because I have a lot of things to share with you. But for those of you that are still glued, that are still connected, let's continue learning. So the constituency of the membership and the men of God, very, very critical. I'm going to address these two together, but they are separate. Probably you fall in the category of men of God. What should we be careful of? What lessons can we learn from this? When we do our services and we are conducting ourselves, I think there is a certain conduct that we should try and maintain. Because now we know that these people have come and they are really against every man of God and not only T.B. Joshua. What is the advice? I'm not advising that we straightly shut our gates and make sure these people don't come. The most reasonable advice would be to open them wide. and just making sure that we do the right thing. Because either you close the door or you open it, if this is going to be their way of operation, just getting to talk to somebody and whatever he says, people believe. Then, There is no hope. 
even if we are going to have members that can believe stories simply because they've been shared. There is something that we have not really done to our members. We haven't given them enough knowledge. If they can be advised by social media, if they can be taught by social media concerning our conduct, it's a shame on their constituency. You members of the church, you have enthroned social media. If a media house tells you something about your man of God, and then you quit going to church, you have officially announced to them that indeed you had no Holy Spirit to tell you the truth. It's a confirmation. You are, you are, you are proving to them they realize we were right. There is no Holy Spirit in the church to help people discern characters of their men of God. It's as stubborn as that. If anything comes out, I'm not saying it's not never going to come out. I'm not saying they should stop exposing, but I'm saying what should come out of that exposure must be a confirmation of what you have picked as a child of God. Where was your Holy Spirit? And having to wait for a documentary to come out and expose your men of God. And any action that you take, it's a confirmation to that media house that you had no Holy Spirit to help you discern the uprightness of your men of God. You are proving that you had no Holy Spirit sitting in that church. They should not be guiding us, those people. They should not be leading us. They have no Holy Spirit. They don't have the wisdom of God. They are not in a position to tell us who is right and who is wrong. They can't. They can't. Let me also tell you something that you need to learn from this as a man of God. You will be so annoyed by the level of persecution when people start to come out and telling people that you slept with them. Do you know all of those people? All of those people that will ever come out and say that you slept with them. You, all of them. All of them. Do you think all of those girls on that documentary are virgins? Every victim that you have seen coming out and saying that he has slept with me, do you think they were virgins before? Even if they had slept with other men before, some of them had children before, but they will never give you one name of another man that they slept with, except your name. Know that as a man of God. You will not hear of the CEOs. You will not hear of the managing directors. You will not hear of the teacher that she slept with to get a pass mark. The only abuse starts when it is you men of, you only hear of one man of God that she slept with. All of these people exposing, they don't tell you the number of men that they slept with. There's only one man that they slept with, which is the man of God. You must know that as a man of God, that that constituency also is messed up. So in my attempt to also want to understand, the Holy Spirit was giving me knowledge and understanding concerning this matter, wanting to know why is it that it's always a man of God. This person has been also abused by other people, including relatives, but they don't come out on any documentary to give us a list of men that they slept with, except the man of God. And the Holy Spirit would give me examples. And he says, to whom much is given, much is required. Why is it so with the men of God? Same applies when you have a police officer stealing from you. You 
you talk about that, you forget about every other thief. Why much is required from the officer? No, it is a man of God. There is no member of your church that you will ever sleep with. And she will not regret it. Know it before you do it. Know it before you do it. She will feel so devastated, so abused, unlike any of the abuse that she ever had. Know it before you attempt it. The day comes and she comes out and she wants to expose. She will not talk about every other affair that she had, except with you. Why? You are an officer. You rather also yourself stay away. Keep a distance. Don't have too many girls around you. Don't. Don't. Even boys don't have too many boys around you. So be very, very careful. They are those that are coming for that specific purpose. You can also have a woman who has come to your church for the sake of wanting to sleep with you and denying her of that opportunity. She can also come out and speak against you and fight you simply because her interest, her agenda was to sleep with you and you proved her wrong. There are people like that. They will come to your church. They come to church. They're not coming to worship God. They're coming for you. I know women that have said, any man of God will fall for me. I will, I will come to your church and I can guarantee you I'm going to sleep with your prophet. And if you prove her wrong, you have killed her ego. She may fight you for the rest of her life. For not falling for such a temptation. Enjoy that kind of persecution. I don't like it because we see it happening nowadays. Every man of God, when something comes out, we all call it persecution. We enjoy it. That's what we do. Every time we stand on the pulpit, we're talking of enemies trying to destroy me. My enemies, this one wants to destroy me. People are persecuting me. Yet some of these things, we've done it. We've done it. How can you have a person that you know that you slept with? If that person is to come and confess, you look for another man of God behind it. Don't you know the person? How can you forget you know the person, you slept with the person? But if the person is to come out, you talk of other men of God fighting you. We seem to enjoy being fought. We are enemies of our own ministries. There are terrible things happening in churches. Terrible things. I've dealt with serious cases. Men of God that are struggling today, they don't know how to start their own ministries. Yet God has called them. And I say, why are you afraid? He said, what I've done when I was sitting under a certain man of God that I'm not going to mention here. Sitting under a man of God being mentored, so-called mentorship. The best that he could do to his own people, if you're going to work for him in that church, he would make sure if you're a man, if you're a lady, there was a bed. You would all remove your clothes be on the bed as if you're having a sexual intercourse and he's recording and he keeps that as proof lest you come out one of these days and you want to criticize him he will tell the public this is the reason why i dismissed him this is the reason why i fired him we caught him doing this and i'm sitting with a man of god now god is telling him to start his work and his mentor is saying you cannot leave me What do I do? Such things are happening in ministries. Where your own people, your own sons and daughters, you ask them to, to lie on the bed naked. You record. And you keep that against them. Lest they speak against you. People should be allowed to speak. 
this issue of saying people should not speak about me. Even social media should not speak about us. They should speak. We just want it to be well spoken. Speak it well. People should be allowed. If people speak against T.B. Joshua, don't say, why are you saying it since he is dead? No, even Jesus, we preach more about him after his death. People are still allowed to speak. There's nothing wrong. People should speak. The issue is just be honest. Know it yourself that you never did it. No matter if the whole world is going to believe that you raped, what is going to give you joy is knowing the truth that you never did it as a man of God. Finally, because we have eternity, the truth will be revealed. People will be looking at you and wondering, ah, how about that one? Did you forgive him? And God says, he never did it. How come we believed it? So don't worry. If people are going to be, I've heard stories of men of God who say, yeah, a member invites you to her house and then you walk in and then and she's on the bed and then she says, sleep with me. If you don't, I'm going to report you to the police. Go ahead and report. So you end up sleeping with her simply because you don't want to be arrested. Is it about, is, is it about avoiding arrest? Even if she goes and she reports you that you raped her and you didn't, go to jail. Go to jail. Are you telling me sleeping with her is better? Is that the only option? There is always a way out. To a man of God who is, who is being tempted, even to a church member who is also being tempted by the man of God, there is always a way out. Don't pretend like you were put in a very, very tight corner. You had a right to choose to make a decision and to say no. But you said yes because you were also interested. What I've noticed with most of the victims, not from T.B. Joshua's ministry, with most of the victims that we have personally tried to help even as a ministry, by advising them to report all of these cases to the police. What I've noticed with most of these victims, most of these victims, they bring it out as rape, yet it was never rape. Majority of them. Majority of them I noticed that they also have their modus operandi, their mode of operation. The only time they think of exposing a man of God is when they realize that he is doing to my friend the same thing that he did to me. When the man of God, when the pastor, when the prophet stops communicating with her, is now going out with another girl, then the fight will erupt. It will begin. What they don't want is the man of God not to sleep with them, but to then go on and sleep with another. Then the exposures will start. So sin is not at that, at that point when the man of God is sleeping with her, when she realizes that I'm not the only one. There is something wrong with that constituency also. You don't know, you people, what you're coming to church for. You don't know. The way that most of these people have been abused, people that have been abused, This thing, it, it, it is gradual. 
if I'm going to help that constituency, I will help you by saying, if those women that you saw in the documentary, if they were really abused, if they were really abused, if T.B. Joshua really slept with them, if that's the truth. So yourself as a constituency, what is there to learn? What are you going to learn from that? I'll, I'll show you what you need to learn, if it is true that he slept with them. This is the lesson for any of the victims. Either you are currently a victim or you are to become a victim in the hands of another man of God. This is the lesson. The attacks that you have watched, how the victims have been attacked, having been victimized by one man of God. And all of us men of God, we come out to defend our own. It's a sign. And there is no hope for you. If you are to make a mistake of giving in and you give a man of God access and he sleeps with you with the hope that you will threaten, with the hope that you will report the matter to the police, with the hope that you will do a documentary, this is a lesson to be learned. You will come out and you will narrate your story and you know what people are going to demand. Evidence. It's a lesson that you need to learn before you get abused because this is something that you can avoid. We will demand that you show us a video. So according to us, we are expecting you to carry a camera on your shoulder and you set it over there and you get raped. When people are saying, give us evidence, you will have people. Listen to me, the next victim. If people say to you, we need evidence, even before you show them evidence, ask them, what do you consider to be evidence? You'll be shocked. Because you can bring out overwhelming evidence and people can still refute. They can still deny it. You will be the only person who believes your story. So what's the advice? You better stay away. You need wisdom on how to conduct yourself. Now that you have seen how others have suffered in the hands of their own people, their own brothers, their own sisters, having been victimized, if they are really victims, it's a lesson to be learned. There is no place that you can go to. The only defense that you have, it cannot be the police. It cannot be a documentary. It cannot be an exposure. It cannot be a live broadcast of any sort. Forget it. Lessons to be learned from this is that I would rather not allow a man of God to touch me. lessons to be learned from this. The closest people to you will come after you. In that same church, when you come out and you say that the man of God slept with me, there are also women in that church that the man of God has never slept with. They will come after you. 70-year-old women in that church, they will tell you, I've been in this church for 20 years. How come he never tried to sleep with me? They think if a man of God is sleeping with women, he has to sleep with every woman in that church. The mode of operation of an abuser is to spare the bigger chunk, three quarters of your audience, you don't touch them so that they rise up for you 
in the case, a court that you have abused will start to speak out. How can somebody come out and say, the man of God has slept with me? And you are crying and you are telling the truth. And you hear someone coming out to defend that man of God. And he says, listen to the, to the defense. Someone will come out, you having said that I've just been raped. Somebody has slept with me. And you are crying and you need help. Someone comes out and he says, no, you are lying. Because the man of God, we have seen him giving the poor rise. He takes care of the poor. What has that to do with him sleeping with me? Even if he's a prophet, it's just one gift that he has. It doesn't mean that gift has destroyed his ability to sleep with a woman. No matter how we prophesy, no matter the miracles that you see us do, stay safe. When a man has made up his mind, when a preacher, when a man of God has made up his mind and he wants to exploit you, he wants to sleep with you, there is a certain protocol. I have to say this in trying to also defend and protect the victim even the future victims. I'm not just addressing people in scorn. No, I'm talking about the church, the body of Christ at large. These are lessons to be learned. I'm telling every woman who is going to church, there is nothing that you are ever going to do to your man of God to bring him down and to expose him. We are now in a generation where now, men of God, integrity is no longer a matter. Uprightness is no longer a prerequisite. Morality is not even a qualification. A dispensation has now come. A woman can come out and show you this boy that you see playing over there. That's his son. Your man of God impregnated me. This is the boy. And the man of God can even come out live and is laughing. He says, so what? And the next service, there are people still in his church. That's the level of delusion that has come upon the body of Christ. There is nothing if you are to allow a man of God to sleep with you. Never think that you're going to have a strategy. The strategy has to be applied before. Take precautions. Now, of course, you hear some of, some of the men of God saying, he came out and indirectly is attacking T.B. Joshua. He's saying T.B. Joshua did it. Now, you will notice that men of God came out. I also watched men of God that came out to defend T.B. Joshua. Even if I were to say T.B. Joshua did it, they also might have also said the same in their attempt to defend him. At what point? Because all of them, they admitted that T.B. Joshua is not perfect. They said, we are not saying T.B. Joshua did not do it. We are not saying T.B. Joshua is a perfect man. And the moment you mention that statement, then there must be room for him to have done this. Because you cannot say that a man of God is not perfect. We are not saying a man of God cannot commit sin. We are not saying a man of God cannot do that. And at the same time, you attack a victim. Because the victim is saying that percentage 
you have admitted that he, there is a possibility that he can do so. So why are you so sure that they are lying? If you are so sure that he is not perfect. He is not perfect. He can do that to you. Myself, I can do that to you. Treat me with caution. Be careful. Stay away. Be smart. So it's, in a, it's not an attack on him. I'm trying to protect you members from us, from men of God. The idea that you have that when a man of God sleeps with you, you get some measure of anointing or grace, that's complete foolishness. There's nothing that you get. If you get a job in your church, make sure that it's a purely professional job. If you're going to work in an organization, in a ministry, in a church, and you have a man of God above you as your superior, as your boss, still be careful. Know when to quit, know when to resign. Know when things have gone beyond church. I'm not saying it's wrong for a girl to work in the church. It's not wrong, but open your eyes. Do I have ladies that are working in our ministry? Yes, they are there. Do they have anything to share? Do we have anything to discuss? My wife is there. She talks to them. Who has ever called me on my phone? Who has ever spoken to me on my phone? It's a clearly demarcated line. It's there. It's there. That's, this is how we protect ourselves. Still in that case, people can lie. But let's not give room to the devil. Why too many women around you? Why too many ladies around you? You see what is happening? This is the issue now. So we need to learn from that. Protect ourselves as men of God. You as a member, learn to also protect yourself. If a man knows that he's going to abuse you, the first thing that he does first is to secure his territory against you bringing out proof. I'm teaching you this, I'm alerting you, I'm warning you. It is by an instruction from God that I need to let you know of these things. You are invited. He's not going to come to your house. In case you are thinking of recording him, he invites you into his office, the most secure place. And he makes sure there is no recording on you. He knows this is what the world is going to ask for. The next time you think of an exposure, show us evidence. An abuser will deal with that first. And he goes ahead of you. He tells people, people are going to rebel against me. My pastors are going to rebel against me. It's given out as prophecy, yet sometimes we know exactly what is happening behind the scenes. When a man has abused you, he goes ahead of you and he prepares his people against you. What are you going to do? No one is going to believe you in that church. Some of the women that are attacking you for being a victim, they are attacking you because they are saying, you, 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 do you think there is something special about you? Are you saying you are more attractive than all of us? They would have wanted that same opportunity. If it's an opportunity. You will have people attacking you for being abused. So the abuser, what he does is to secure his turf against whatever you are going to say. He secures his position. He creates connections. Men of God are paying the police. They are protected. 
Never think, child, child of God, daughter, listen to me. Listen to me. Woman, listen to me. Don't be careless and hope that justice will take its course. The man before he abuses you, he makes sure that every string is tied. Wherever you go, the man has created a relationship. An abuser, that's the first thing that he does. He pushes his way into influential offices. Get as much connections as you can so that you are heavily guarded and protected by those in authority. And then you go on to abuse. There is no way you can go. There is no way you can go. That is why it's a terrible thing Sometimes we cry, even as a man of God, I cry. You watch videos, especially in Africa. We have seen leaders of states visiting organizations that are committing atrocities. I'm telling you what I know. It's happening, especially in Africa. Yet the leader of a state was supposed to go through the doctrines of the organizations, the conduct of the men of God. You don't want to be found sitting in a church simply because there are 20,000 people and right in there, there are 13 year old girls that are pregnant, officially married, 12 year olds are married. And when they come out 20, 30 years later, the whole world is saying, why, why were you quiet? How do you report such a man when you see your abuser sitting right next to power? Where do you report? Why am I telling you this? So that you protect yourself. Don't wait for the courts. You protect yourself. Never put your trust in the documentaries. Don't wait for any exposure. You will never bring that man down. He will sleep with you and he walks away. Stay away from him. So how do you stay away from him? Listen to me. In a church environment, the abuse can only be doctrinal. Office. private meetings, your hunger for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a man of God is the breeding ground for some of these stories. Kill your appetite, your desire to want to talk to the man of God, the two of you. I'm helping you as a member. A man of God who cannot provide solutions to your problems from the pulpit. There is no miracle in the office. If he lacks wisdom from the pulpit, if he lacks advice from the pulpit, do you think in the office there is another uh, HDMI cable that he's going, going to connect to that gives him knowledge? Is there a satellite, a satellite dish that is beaming wisdom towards his office? If the man is shallow on the pulpit, what do you think he's going to tell you privately? I'm not saying it's wrong. Yes, you can have other issues that you can say, I would want to meet the man of God. I want to discuss this matter. But is there a good environment? I'm not saying I cannot talk to you, the two of us. I've had people coming to me and we've spoken. When you hear it's one-on-one, -on -one, don't think it's just one-on-one. -on -one. When it's one-on-one -on -one with me, don't think you come in there and you see me alone. You'll be disappointed. You'll be disappointed. And in that case, I make sure cameras are rolling. Cameras are rolling. Because I know these things can go the other way. That's why when you, when you are to lose such a footage, 
you don't go to sleep, you don't relax because you know these are people's secrets. It's not about me, it's about the people. Let's protect ourselves. The government to a certain extent must get involved in protecting the citizens, even against men of God. The government has to be involved. Two things were being committed in that church, in the book of Samuel. If money is being stolen, from people by us. How many times have I asked even for the government to be involved? From the receiving of the offerings until we spend the money. Where is the government? They are allowed to have their own people in there. It's good for all of us. It keeps us clean. Why are we inviting them to come? Because we are, we are all being accused of stealing money. We are all being accused of selling oil. If they are going to do a documentary of us selling oil, they should give us, as for me, at least one person who has bought it. Yet it's news everywhere. We sell oil, anointing oil. If we come out and we are claiming that if you use this, if you have a calendar in your house, if you put a wristband, your HIV will go. Your cancer will die because you have a calendar in the house and people are buying calendars. Of course, the government is supposed to be involved in that because we're destroying lives. We, want, we need your protection, even as a government. We need the government. We need also to be protected. But you need to understand that an abuser will go all the way. And some of you leaders, you would think that a man of God really loves you. And yet it's simply protection. It's a matter of time you realize there are those that love you because they love you. There are those that love you because of the protection that you can offer before a man of God can abuse you, he will make sure that his place is protected. And when you come out, the world will be asking you for proof and evidence. Yet you had no phone on you, no conversation was ever recorded. It's a word of your mouth. So what do you do now? Stay away. Sit in the church, let him teach. Go home. Listen to his steps, read his books. I, I promise you, daughter, that book is never going to rape you. Trust you me. If there is any abuse doctrinally, another person can help you. This is wrong. You are safer that way. Don't enjoy spending time the entire night as a woman sitting around a man of God. It's not safe for you. It's not safe for him. The only advice that I can give to you, because you contribute. Yes, men of God have come out to say T.B. Joshua has never done that. Some are saying he has never. Some are saying there is room. But I've never seen a man of God coming out to say David never slept with Bathsheba. We all agree that he did it. And yet he is in the Bible. He is still being celebrated. What advice can I give? I can give an advice to David. I can also give an advice to Bathsheba. There is something wrong with the members also. What are you doing at the river? Close to David's house. That's not where she used to bath. It was only that day that David came, went up the building, and he looked and he saw her bathing at the river. What is it with you women? You are now getting your men killed. Had you taken your bath in the house? Had you taken your bath in the house? 
David was never going to see you. The only advice that I can give you, David, stay committed. He did not attend a conflict. He's not in the battleground. He's at home, he's idle. And he starts looking around and he sees this woman. And this woman also, as if she's, she's not aware of what she's doing. Most of these girls, they know exactly what they are doing. They are women that are good at seducing men of God. And after you sleep with them, the story changes. So my advice to Bathsheba, my advice to victims, stay away from the river close to David's house. Watch out. Keep a distance. You cannot cancel my wife in my absence as a man. You cannot as a prophet advise the men to leave. There are couples who are so foolish, husbands that are so, they think everything is spiritual. Okay, the husband, you can go now. I want to talk to your wife. <laughs> What's wrong with you? We have seen it happen in church, abuse in church. Isn't there a certain degree of abuse? You can see it. Can we really say there's never been any slightest abuse in Scorn? You think I've never watched live broadcasts? I've watched several live broadcasts where I've witnessed, you might have witnessed it, where a person is holding a microphone and T.B. Joshua is ministering. If you don't do it well, he would hit you during life. Is there? I'm not talking about something, okay, if that can happen while the cameras are rolling, how about behind the scenes? You can't come out and say everything that is being said about him is false. It means you're also a liar. You're also a liar. Are there things that I've seen and I can say this is wrong? Some of the things that I saw him do I was doing, and God said to me, stop doing that, and I stopped. There was a time in our ministry where I used to conduct deliverance, and I would allow demons to talk. Myself watching also another man of God doing that, delivering people and asking them, what are you doing? What's your name? And so on. It was when I was watching that. I didn't think that so he's a ritualist because of what he is doing. Because I was also doing that, knowing that I'd never done any ritual. But he said to me, you stop that. That is wrong. Then I said to myself, but I'm doing it. How can that be wrong? That's how he said to me, it is also wrong. You can have by all the tips. I'm conducting deliverance. I would allow demons to speak. When they say, man of God, you are, we are seeing fire behind you. Ah, you are so... I used to entertain that. We are coming from the sea. Uh, we, we, are, we, are, we are coming from, from the desert. We are coming entertaining, giving them. I was watching that. I used to do that. Not anymore. Because I was told, stop doing that. Maybe God never told him to stop. So to him, maybe it's okay. But to me, he said, stop. When people come, I've given you information to give to the people. Don't give demons an opportunity to teach my people because their information is not accurate. So two, three, four hours of allowing demons to, to speak, demons are teaching people about the dark kingdom, about their operations. So they are coming to church to sit under evil spirits and to be taught by demons. I to stop that. I, I had that critical eye from the word go, analyzing things. Most of the men of God I've analyzed. Where there are extremes, I would see 
That's an extreme. As back as then, I would watch T.B. Joshua ride on, a, on the back of a bike, going to the prayer mountain, making sure everything he's doing is being recorded, demonstrating humility. Yet still at that point, myself, I could see, yes, that's humility, but that it doesn't mean that the man is poor. How is he so desperate to that extent that he goes on, to, on the back of a bike? And then I watch as he is being followed, being filmed. And I would look at the footage, I would see the windshield of a car. There is the entire media crew in the car recording him. It means there's a car. He would have gotten into the car. They are following him. They are recording him. It takes just a split of a second to, 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 to think again what exactly is happening here. We have watched the programs on television, documentaries or even movies on survival of a man who is lost in the forest in a desert. And for two hours, the man is struggling. The man is suffering. And you're wondering, is he going to make it? Is he going to survive this? You forget there's the entire crew in that desert. After every shot, they go back and they are recharging their batteries. You do think the man is hungry. So when it comes to certain extremes in terms of acting, we are that smart to also know. So I have observed men of God because I want to learn. <laughs> I want to learn. So why am I telling you all these things? So that you know, men of God hear this. I've also learned that, look at the life of Jimmy Swaggart. Jimmy Swaggart. Jimmy Swaggart. All the did was to take a picture. He wasn't naked. Deborah Mumphrey was known to be a prostitute. And there was a man of God at that time who was also coming up and he realized that Jimmy Swaggart is the man. He would fill up stadiums. And he knew there was a place that he used to visit. And that man of God hired a private detective to spy on Jimmy Swaggart. And one of the days Jimmy Swaggart went, he said it was because I was too much stressed by ministry. He goes to this woman, a detective is over there, and he calls the man of God to come. And he comes and he says, okay, don't allow that car to, to leave the place. They puncture the vehicle, and Jimmy Swaggart is still there, and he comes out, he's at the car, they're taking photos. And photos, they came out. These photos were not naked. It's not proof, it's not evidence that you see now current men of God deny. Photos, they were standing clothed, just standing next to this woman. It was enough even for Jim Swaggart to come out in the public and cry and confess and say, I've sinned. You see him weeping in front of his church. Lord, forgive me. <laughs> A black man never does that. Nor eat before you sleep with him. A black man ran away. It's better off. In terms of spirituality, we can talk about this and that in America, but I know the whites. I've listened to a lot of white preachers admitting to certain errors that they have committed. Not a black man. 
not a black man. That was not enough. That cannot be used in now. A picture of me standing with a woman. And then I go on to confess. Then the Deborah Mamfrey woman came out to give a narration. And she said, the reason why I'm telling you it is because he made his own confession. I wouldn't have said this to anyone. She's not saying I was raped. She's not saying I'm trying to expose. She's just giving her side of the story after the man of God had actually come out. Rarely do you find such a man of God. In this generation, whatever you think is evidence, forget it. They lie more than members. We are not afraid of anything. Fear us, stay away. Be wise, be smart. I've watched the videos of great men, that's what I do, so that I avoid falling. Tiger Hood stood over there and he made a confession in the presence of parents, the family, apologizing to each and every individual. What I did was wrong. We're expecting less from him yet you see much in terms of transparency. He's not a man of God. It affected his entire world. Yet he came out to confess. Of course, maybe he's black. It's the only black man, maybe. <laughs> but there's better professionalism out there than in church. There's a lot of abuse that happens in the church that is not accounted for. You need to use your mind. If I tell you that if you leave my ministry, you are not going to make it in life, that's abuse and that's false. If I keep you in church every single day, there is a church service, that's abuse. When are you going to spend time with your family? I've watched it even on television the last Christmas. I was at home with my family. But I watched, I saw on YouTube, live, live service, live service. There were live services on Christmas. The men of God had members from the beginning of the year. The only time that you have with your family, he still wants to preach. When are you going to exercise? When are you going to practice what he's teaching? Attending church service every single day is a sign that you are not smart. Get a job. Get some money. Look after your family. Know how to escape abuse. There are many signs. There are many signs. People must be allowed to live when they want to live. Don't lie to people that when they leave you, they won't make it in life. Some will even become better. I'm saying this to educate you. I'm saying this to give you knowledge. President Clinton had an affair with a woman, Lewinsky, Monica. And he came out at some point to deny it. 1998, in, in January, 26th January, he came out in public and he said, I have never had any connection, any affair, any relationship with Monica. And he, he lied under an oath. And a day came 
he came back to the same people and he admitted. And he apologized to the people and apologized to his family. And he was almost impeached for having lied under oath. This is not a pastor. This is not even a prophet. I'm telling you, you would have every other man telling you the truth, except a man of God. Your parents, keep your daughters away. Keep your children away. I'm not saying I don't have women also serving in our ministry, but there's a big distance there. If you were to ask me, I've said this before, I will not allow any of my daughters to work with any prophet, all the prophets that I know, all the bishops that I know. I will not allow any of my daughters. Allow yours. If they are to go and work there, I will sit down with them. I would want them to explain to me the environment. I will guide them so that before a man of God can make an attempt, I know how it starts. Man of God is not, is not bringing out a gun and sleeping with all these women. It's a build up. You know where it is going. You know where the thing is going. I want you to come, please clean my office. And, and the next time, come again. And, 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 and every time he wants to see you, where is it going? Before it happens, you would have known the man loves me, the man wants to sleep with me. You would have known. Don't come out and lie that he raped me, he forced me. You were interested. That was your desire. Now protect yourself. My question is, how can we have a golf player coming out to confess? You have a president and they are saying, you face a jail term because you've lied not just impeachment. And Monica was being followed. Even the FBI was involved. They threatened, they said, you will spend 27 years in jail. If you don't admit that you had a relationship with the president. They wanted the president off. She suffered a lot. But she was also honest enough to say, I know how it started. When the president looked at me that day, I had a blue dress and it was showing what I was putting on inside. She's honest enough. And she said, when I saw that he was interested, the next time that I knew that I was going to meet him, I repeated the same dress. But Sheba, you are aware that this river is close to David's house. Don't report it as rap. Don't lie. You are interested. We know you are there. So I'm touching every aspect. I'm closing now. I'm touching every aspect. There are men of God out there ready to abuse you. It's a reality. Don't deny that. It's happening out there. Cases will be raised against you. Even, even if you didn't do anything, myself, even just saying what I've said, they would also want me to have my own cases. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? The doors are open. But the issue is protect yourself. Do everything possible to make sure there is no room for such things to come out. There's no room for such things to come out. Keep on praying for your men of God, even as he prays for you. And as much as you have trust in us, we also have trust in you. But you are a suspect. We are suspects. Open your eyes. Because these men of God are men of God. There is a man part that can.
can abuse you. Protect your children. If they go to any church and they are working, they are serving under any man of God, talk to them. And before your daughter is abused, you would have heard about it and you ignored it. You thought all these people were lying. Not all these things are lies. Be careful. There is abuse in the church in different forms. Protect, guard yourself because after the attack, after the abuse, you have no room to protect. You have no way to report. So watch out. Be very, very, very careful. The best you can do now is to stay away. If you're going to drive to church, get into church, sit, listen to the teaching. Apply what the man tells you from the pulpit. There, are, there is never going to be any secrets specifically stored and reserved for you. No. Go home after service. Oh, man of God said he wants to see me. Go with your father. Go with your brother. There's no secret unless you have something to hide. That is going to help you. Even in that office, it's not going to really, really force you. You stand your ground and you say, open that door if you don't want trouble. And he's going to open the door. I'm telling you this. You can't go out and you spend 20 years and you're quiet. What are you afraid of? There is no man of God who abuses you who is not afraid of exposure. They fear being exposed. Are there no people being paid to lie? People can be given money to lie. A person can be given money to lie. I know people that have been given money to even say the truth. Being paid to even say the truth. They love money to that extent. And a person who can come out to attack a man of God because of money, that same person also can be paid money to come back and confess that I was lying. So don't go by confessions that you see people coming to church and they say, please forgive me, I lied against the man of God. And you are busy insulting the woman. The woman knows the truth. Because of money, she can still be paid to come back to church and confess that she lied against the man of God. So please be careful. Open your eyes. Understand. This kind of journalism that is happening now it's not proper. It's for people who are lazy to think. We need better proof, better evidence. If the people that are coming have no evidence, they've come to you so that you help them acquire evidence. Go to those places, investigate. Not just interviewing people, investigate, let's have footages of those things happening. Even myself, when I'm to see today, even the president confessing, whether it is Tiger who's confessing, I'm not even quick to believe simply because it's him confessing. I also have to investigate further. Is he not under duress? Have they not kidnapped his, his children in order for him to confess that? If I cannot quickly believe even what the man himself is confessing, how can I believe another person? So don't be quick. Don't be quick. Just stay safe. Man of God is a man of God. And what I've seen God doing is he makes sure that if a man is abusive, he cannot hide it forever there will always be information coming out that you will deny before you are abused. There will always be information. It will leak. People will get to know this man is sleeping with women before he sleeps with you. You will know it. But the problem is you come there, you sit and you see him prophesy and you say, this level of prophecy, he can't be prophesying like that and be sleeping with women. He can't be doing those miracles and be sleeping with women. Who told you he can't? Who told you? 
So be very, very careful. Stay away. You members, protect yourselves. Media houses, stick to your professionalism. When you think of doing any exposure, make sure that you are indeed exposing. So I'll rest my case for now. If there's going to be anything else, given that people are going to really dissect <laughs> and cut off pieces from what I've said, I may come back again and give you more lessons that needs to be learned. But child of God, I believe we had a wonderful time and I don't think I need to apologize for taking too long. You can keep on watching this at your own free time until you extract lessons from what we see happening. Don't be quick to believe what you hear. The social media is not born again. BBC is not born again. They are not sent by God to correct and to bring order into the body of Christ. If there was anything good that T.B. Joshua would have done, you were never going to see it in that documentary. Never. But if there's, if there's something wrong, especially if you are black, and all of you black preachers, be careful. Now know, every morning, check your complexion. No, you are black. They will always come after you. They will come after me. But we have to relax. There's nothing to be afraid of. Let them lie against us as long as we know that we are right before God. Integrity is key. So as you go and you choose a ministry that you want to belong to as a member, please be careful. Integrity is very important. The moral uprightness of your man of God is important. If you are a man of God, you want to be open. It's, it's a, there are churches where the founder has 15 wives and still their members going there. Why not declare it openly? It can still be a church. Rather than having one wife that we are always lying to people, this is my, my love, this is my this, this is my that, stand up, let the people look at it, and you know that you're sleeping with everyone. That's deception. So look for a place, and when you get there, discern the place. Understand the place. Ask the Holy Spirit. Don't allow social media to teach you. They are far away from your men of God. And those of you seeking to do exposures, do a better job. Don't just tell us stories. If you know that you have no proof, you shouldn't have stayed in a place where you are not even allowed to touch your phone. You shouldn't have stayed in such a place. It's your fault. It's your fault. How do, you, how do you talk to your mother? How do you talk to your father? You still have relatives. Is it a concentration camp? You should have seen that on the, word, on the onset, that I'm not safe here. So your hunger for God, be very, very careful. In as much as you love God so much, still understand that you can have a man of God, learn from him. You still need a man of God. I'm not saying now stay at home. I will never advise people to stay at home. You still need a man of God. That's what BBC would want everyone to now believe. Let's do away with pastors, let's do away with prophets. Stay away from church, that's what they want. Why? I've heard people say, you read your Bible at home. Okay, so are we saying, now that you have an application on your iPhone that tells you about your heart, it talks about your, your health condition. Are we supposed to dismiss all the doctors now? Google, you can ask any question. Google will tell you. Are we supposed now to dismiss all the teachers from colleges and schools? And yet that's exactly what these people are trying to do. So that you begin to suspect every church and every miracle that you see happening. You think there is an evil spirit. There is a ritual behind it. 
and you try to have a relationship with God with no man guiding you. And suddenly, you're like that Ethiopian eunuch, you're sitting in the chariot reading the Bible, but there is no interpreter and you are confused. You still need a man of God in your life. You cannot do without. Yet this is their agenda. They will push it until you decide to stay home. They will push it until you begin to question every, every testimony and every miracle. This is the reason why I had to come out to say no. Miracles are authentic. Miracles are real. Prophecies are there. I pray for the grace of God. I pray for the mercies of God. The Lord will increase you, will increase your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding, your light will shine brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Child of God, remain blessed. God will cause his face to shine upon you every day and he will be gracious unto you and he will give you peace and he will give you a measure of discernment. You will get to know and hear and see things even before they happen. He will keep you away from danger in Jesus' name. Stay blessed. I love you so much. Until we meet again. Bye-bye.